Okay, and we're on to questions 13 and 14. Hopefully lucky for us. If you're liking the series, then please do think about liking and subscribing. At time of recording, we are coming towards crunch time with the revision for the IB High Level AI paper. So make sure you're paying attention to what we are doing here. These questions are really critical for getting those sort of grade fours, grade fives. So make sure that we are focused. Right on to this question. So a submarine is located in a sea at coordinates 0 0.8, 1.3 and minus 0 0.3 relative to a ship positioned at the origin O. So the X direction is due east. That's important to know here. The Y direction is due north and important later in the question. The Z direction is vertically upwards. We'll come back to this for part B. All distances are me measured in kilometers. That's also important. And the submarine travels with a direction vector, minus two, minus three, one. Assuming it travels in a straight line, also important, write down an equation. So we're looking for a vector equation here for the line along which it travels. Now, remember notation. Notation is important and you'll lose a mark if you do not write this in terms of R with the little squiggle underneath to represent it is a vector. And in order to build up our vector equation, we need a position vector. Well, we're just going to essentially convert this into a vector. This is the way that we do this. So we're going to get 0 0.8, 1.3, minus 0 0.3. OK, and then we're going to have a lambda lots of the direction vector, which is going to be equal to minus 2, minus 3, 1. Teacher might be using different notation. I've always used lambda to represent here the direction vector, which is very nice. It gives us the two marks here. Now we're going to go on to question B. So the submarine reaches the surface of the sea. So this course is all about applications and all about reading the question at a point P, and we need to find the coordinates of P. So in order to reach the surface, we need to think whether the X direction, Y direction, or Z direction needs to be zero. And notice it's the Z direction here that indicates it's vertically upwards. So we want the bottom part of our vector, so we want this part of it to be equal to zero. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go minus 0 0.3, plus one lot of lambda. Remember, lambda times one is just lambda, and that's equal to zero. So it gives us a really straightforward equation here to solve. So therefore, by adding 0 0.3 on both sides, lambda is equal to 0 0.3. And all we're going to do at this point is put this back into our vector equation, and then we can work out what the specific coordinates of P is. So if we put this back in, what we get here is 0 0.8, 1.3 minus, oh, there's my minus, 0 0.3 plus 0 0.3 lots of minus 2, minus 3, and positive 1. And now we just have to work this out. So let me write my working out here. So we get 0 0.8 plus uh, 0 0.3 lots of minus 2. And here we get 1.3 plus 0 0.3 lots of minus 3. And the bottom one, we kind of already know this is 0, but just to make double, double check that we are getting 0 out of this. And if we do this calculation, let's see what we get here. So we get 0 0.6, 0 0.8 minus 0 0.6 is 0 0.2. 1.3 minus 0 0.9, that's equal to 0 0.4. And we knew already the bottom is 0. That's kind of what we wanted. Now, I think if I remember rightly, the mark scheme, you would still get all two marks for writing this but again they want a coordinate so strictly speaking um one moment so strictly speaking we need a coordinate here so this is not a coordinate this is a vector so we need to write very clearly now that p the coordinate of it is we just read this off so we get 0 0.2 0 0.4 and zero. So that's the coordinate, not the vector. So it's good to be very precise with these things. Um, I'm slightly confused in the mark scheme here. They wanted to find OP. Well, this would be the uh, coordinate for P. Um, what they wanted from the mark scheme is the magnitude of the vector. So in fact, they wanted you to find the magnitude of OP. So let's just finish this off. To work out the magnitude of any vector, we simply use Pythagoras. So what we're going to do here 
is we're going to work out 0 0.2 squared plus 0 0.4 squared plus 0. And what we do at this point is put this into our calculator. I've already done this uh, before. So this gives you 0 0.447 kilometers. Now remember, go back to the question, all distances are measured in kilometers. So we need to write kilometers at the end here. Let's make sure we're not losing any marks here. And of course, as we've always done on this exam, we have done this to three significant figures. So you can have a look through the mark scheme and see where you pick up the marks. Uh, just a highlight here that if you do not have this R equals at the start, then you lose an accuracy mark. So keep that in mind. Notice I've got the lambda 0 0.3 method mark written out the vector equation method mark. And yes, you do need to write this as a coordinate, but they do accept the coordinates of P in vector form. So that's interesting. Again, the mark schemes, you, know, you have to look through these quite carefully to make sure you know where you're picking up the marks. Notice I've written out my Pythagoras for the method mark here and then worked out the correct answer. So just make sure you're being very precise in the uh, way you're actually writing this. So you're picking up all seven marks and not losing an unnecessary mark here as well. OK, and on to question 14. So a nice stats question. So we have the weight of apples from Tony's farm follow a normal distribution. So I'm going to underline that, particularly on high level because we work with quite a few distributions. Uh, with mean 158 grams and a standard deviation of 13 grams. The apples are sold in bags that contain six apples. Good to know. And first of all, we need to work out the mean weight of a bag of apples. So essentially what the question is asking here is uh, the mean weight from six apples. So I'm writing this in nice and clearly. Well, if we know the mean of one apple is 158, then the mean of a bag... So bag mean, I'm writing this down. Well, that's just equal to 158 grams and we've got six apples. So we just times that by six. And if we do that on our calculator, we will get then 948 grams. Notice that I've seen this as two marks. So I'm making sure I'm writing that working and then putting down the answer very clearly. Now the second question is trickier than it looks. So we want the standard deviation now of the weights of these bag of apples. So we know the standard deviation here. So the variance, remember how the variance and standard deviation are linked here, is equal to 13 squared, which you can work this out, of course, as 169 grams. Now we want to work out the bag variance. This is why we have to be very careful. Well, we have six apples here, so we're going to do six times 13 squared. But we're not looking for the bag variance, we're looking for the standard deviation variance. So the standard deviation variance, remember the relationship between variance and standard deviation, we're going to find the square root of 6 times 13 squared. So let's pop over to my calculator and work this out. Okay, so we need to type in 6 times 13 squared. So that's that button here. We get 1014 and then we go control and square root of our original answer. We could have done the square root at the start actually. And then we get our answer here of 31.8434. I maybe advise you have a bigger float than I've got here, but I'm just going to copy that over 31.8434. So 31.8434. And that gives me my standard deviation uh, of the bag. Sorry, I should have just written standard deviation of the bag. Okay, to give me 31.8434. Now, what a lot of these IB questions like to do is follow up on what you've done in a subsequent question, uh, particularly on paper two, less so on paper one, but we do have it here. So find the probability now that the bag selected at random weighs more than one kilo. Remember one kilo, just very quickly, it's a thousand grams. So we want to set up our uh, normal distribution here. So our variable here is the normal distribution. And we need to write here the mean, which is 948. So we're taking this answer here. We're doing it the bag of apples, remember? Not just one apple. And our variance, which is what we just worked out, 31.8434. Yeah, dot, dot, dot. Uh, but the squared, because we're looking for the variance within our normal distribution that we're setting up. And what we need to do here is we're looking for more than one kilo, so more than a thousand grams. 
So what the probability of x is greater than 1000. So I'm writing everything very clearly. So I've got all the information there for the examiner. Let's go to my calculator and work this out. Okay, so we go to menu on my TI Inspire. We go to statistics and go to probability as well, I think. We're gonna to go to distributions and because we're looking for greater than a thousand, so we're not looking for a specific value, we want normal CDF. Now our lower bound, because we want greater than a thousand, is going to be a thousand. Uh, for the upper bound, just put a big number. So I'm gonna put, yeah, a few extra zeros on the top. And on the calculator, remember, they want the mean and the standard deviation. So be careful which one you're putting into your calculator. Our mean was 948 from part A, and the standard deviation from part B was that 31.8434. Uh, we pop that in, and then we get our final answer of 0 0.051235. I'm going to write that in its entirety. So 0 0.051. Two, three, five, dot, dot, dot. And now I'm going to round this, of course, the three significant figures for my probability. So 0 0.0512 rounded to 3SF. So I'm very clear to the examiner. I've done a clear rounding procedure. You don't want to lose a mark just from something essentially silly like that as well. So you can have a look through the mark scheme. So you've got that in front of you, so you can see exactly where I'm picking up the method marks as well as the final answer calculation as well. Um, notice you get to get some follow through marks here um, from the previous questions as well. So just be aware of exactly where you're picking up those marks. If you haven't checked out some of the earlier videos in this series, I suggest you check out the video right in front of you here because we go through some interesting questions from this uh, past paper, paper one uh, from May 2021.